Thank you. Uh, before I start, the Intel legal team wanted me to show everybody in the room this. I'm not going to read it. Um, I'm Gary Martz, uh, Senior Director, Intel Foundry Services. Uh, really glad to be here. I think a couple of speakers have commented it's so weird to be face to face and presenting in person instead of over a video call. Um, for about the last decade at Intel, I could probably describe myself as, you know, the best description as a standards professional. Um, I've worked in a large organization within Intel called the Next Generation Standards Team. They do everything from 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB, PCI, and such. Um, I've represented Intel at the Wi-Fi Alliance. Um, I've built a standards organization for consumer IoT from scratch with companies like Samsung and Cisco. And for about the last five years, I have led an industrial standards team, uh, standardizing the technologies and developing open source software for uh, the foundation for Industry 4.0. Um, I've worked for uh, Foundry Services for about a month now. Um, still a standards professional and really enjoy the work um, from the Intel perspective and what they expect of me. Uh, working in the standards space is uh, it's a fairly uh, straightforward objective. You know, I'm supposed to help identify friction in the market, uh, do things to remove that friction, allow the market to rapidly expand, sockets proliferate, and then my buddies on the sales side, they go and compete for the sockets. Uh, now I work for Intel Foundry Services. It's the same thing, but a little bit different. Um, we want the sockets to proliferate, but then we want to build silicon for the ecosystem that's going to go compete to populate those sockets. Um, Intel Foundry Services, it is about a year old, so I figure, um, you know, probably most people in this room aren't familiar with us. I want to spend a few slides just giving a background on Intel Foundry Services and then talk more about, you know, why is Intel here? I've actually been asked that question about a half dozen times during breaks and lunch when people see my Intel badge and the reaction is, you know, we're kind of surprised to see Intel here. And I get it. Uh, we're here because of Foundry Services. Uh, Intel Foundry Services has been set up as a standalone business at Intel. So it means we're separate from the core of Intel's manufacturing team. We're separate from our product teams. Um, we are dedicated to ensuring our customers uh, receive focus in terms of service, uh, technology enablement, capacity commitments. Uh, and we also want to offer our customers like complete solutions that they can rely on to build their products. Um, we offer a broad market portfolio, leading edge process nodes, uh, support for uh, multiple ISAs, uh, robust IP ecosystem uh, from Intel and third parties, uh, industry leading in in innovations. Um, you know, we have a customer centric business model focused on our customers and co development, uh, flexible commercial models tailored to our customer needs. Um, we have a, we've announced a $1 billion innovation fund focused on Risk Five in par partnership with Intel Capital. I'll, I'll touch on that in a few slides. And then we also have years of experience that we want to bring and offer to the Risk Five community in terms of deep technology and manufacturing expertise, uh, ro robust supply chains at scale, um, leading edge R&D, and a globally diverse uh, manufacturing footprint. And I have more on that in a second as well. Um, but we also, you know, we want our customers to be able to differentiate with complete solutions. So that means we'll offer any Intel core or accelerator in our portfolio, any Intel packaging, and also design services with our architects and designers. Uh, we were founded um, knowing that our basic offerings to the ecosystem need to be world-class. Um, so that's any ecosystem core, an OSAT network, uh, a broad ecosystem of IP offering, whether it's from Intel IP portfolio or third-party portfolio, and then again, design enablement, uh, industri industry standard PDKs, uh, broad EDA and cloud uh, tool enablement. Um, we want our customers to choose from the best uh, from Intel as well as the broader ecosystem uh, to build leadership products. And our global footprint also provides geodiverse manufacturing. Uh, this is a fun slide, something I'm very proud of to present. 
Um, our advanced manufacturing scale is critical to, global su to supply global customers. We have six global uh, wafer fabrication sites in the US, uh, EU, and Israel. Uh, we have six global assembly and test locations. And then we've announced plans to significantly grow our operations specifically for Intel Foundry services also in the US and the EU. Uh, we've advanced, uh, announced 20 billion for a new manufacturing site in the state of Ohio, uh, another 20 billion for uh, fab expansion and new manufacturing in Arizona, uh, as much as 80 billion euros in the EU over the next decade. So this is manufacturing and foundry services in Ireland, Italy, Poland, and Spain. Uh, 17 billion euros for a new manufacturing in Germany, 12 billion for expansion at our Ireland site, and then a new R&D and design hub right here in France. You know, we're making these investments and we're here today uh, because meeting the needs of the, the growing risk vice risk five community is one of our key objectives. Uh, we share the same vision that a free and open ISA um, that is developed by a broad industry collaboration is needed. Uh, we recognize that there's already been a tremendous amount of work done in risk five um, and that risk five is already on a path to success. Uh, we want to help continue this work and that's why we're investing. You know, I've seen this slide, I think Callista just showed it. Um, this type of uh, um, success doesn't happen by chance. You know, there's a need and there's also a strong organization behind it. Um, setting the priorities and leading teams to deliver on objectives. You know, the future looks even brighter. Um, 60 billion risk 5 CPU cores by 2025. Um, we're excited about being a part of this community. Uh, we've already in announced investments in our manufacturing sites and uh, we've already announced um, you know, our, our billion dollar innovation fund focused on risk 5 uh, This is uh, um, focused on equity investments and disruptive startups, uh, strategic investments for scale partnerships, uh, target applications such as next generation leaders of semiconductors, IP providers, risk five ecosystem, uh, solution providers, uh, semiconductor devices, tools, electronic design automation, uh, semiconductor manufacturing equipment and materials, uh, and chiplet ecosystem and next generation package. Um, we really, um, you know, are proud of this partnership with Intel Capital to be able to drive this fund and invest in the Risk V ecosystem. You know, of course, our goal is to make sure that Risk V runs best on Intel Foundry Services Silicon, and we also want to be able to provide services that help accelerate our customers' time to market. Uh, we're also partnering with, or we've partnered with Sci5, Ventana, Esperana, and is to provide best in class performance power and area. Uh, these partners are going to make CPU cores, uh, chiplets, fully packaged products uh, for a wide range of key market segments. Uh, you know, and in addition to this innovation fund, uh, we're also investing in growing Risk Five as a member of this community. Uh, we joined, like I said, about uh, in last uh, few months ago in February. Um, we're looking forward to investing resources in areas that we can help. Um, we have extensive history in building rich technology ecosystems. Uh, and as a member of Risk Five, we'll be making substantial contributions to the SOC architecture, as well as the software stack. Our intention is that uh, with these contributions, along with the Innovation Fund, that will help drive an ecosystem that will, will continue to fuel the growth of Risk Five and the adoption of Risk Five cores. In terms of the SOC architecture, uh, Risk Five growth is going to require robust S. SOC solutions. This includes boot security, 
firmware resilience, isolation, partitioning, virtualization, uh, RAS, performance monitoring, tel telemetry. Um, you know, and we'll help evaluate the current gaps and we'll contribute resources to drive closure uh, where we can help, you know, such as end to end secure solutions. Uh, we want to minimize the fragmentation. Uh, we want to contribute standard internal buses for various bus types, fabrics, uh, infrastructure for multi core architectures, uh, debug solutions, and optimizations. In parallel with contributing to the SOC hardware stack, we also want to contribute to the software stack. Um, those that were with me last night know I like to tell a good story. Uh, 10, 12 years ago, we were at an Intel awards ceremony and our, uh, our VP that owned software uh, for all of Intel and our VP that owned the Centrino laptop platform had a gentleman's bet. I don't know what the bet was, all I know is that whoever lost had to get up on stage at this award ceremony and say whatever the other guy told him to say. And the, uh, the hardware VP lost, and he had to get up on stage and say, hardware without robust software is just heat. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So obviously we need to treat uh, the same software standardization, our software standardization with the same care as hardware standardization. Um, you know, RISC-5 staff created this diagram and made a call for contributions. We're gonna meet this call for contributions uh, by participating again in, in hiring resources and applying those resources within this community to help close gaps. Uh, we're we're going to focus on the core portions of the stack that have to be compatible across vendors. Uh, portions of the stack also are going to be application and, and vertical specific, and those requirements are going to be driven best by the customers and the members of that vertical community. Uh, we can help there as well, and we intend to help there as well. Um, with the foundational hardware and software, you know, we hope that developers will have tools that they need to make the community thrive. Sorry, I wrote down notes so I wouldn't say anything wrong. I've been, only been in the job for a month. <laughs> and, you know, we want, we've already announced uh, to further assist developers, uh, Horse Creek. Uh, Horse Creek, I want to stress, is not a commercial product. Uh, Horse Creek is a software enablement platform uh, that's going to be available to our partners. Um, it's a development platform in SOC. It's powered by the Sci-5 um, uh, P550 processor. Um, and as I mentioned, we're also working in the ecosystem with Ventana, Esperano, and Andes as well on making these products and helping them um, deliver solutions to help the, in, the developer ecosystem. Um, I didn't write it down on the slide. But I want to mention, uh, we're also evaluating an FPGA development platform uh, to further enable the ecosystem. Uh, I don't have details to share. Hopefully this is something we'll be able to share later on this year. Um, but I couldn't share details today, unfortunately. You know, we're committed to contributing where we can to help this ecosystem with hardware, software, tools, uh, the Global Innovation Fund. Uh, the goal is to leverage our experience and be a good contributing member of this community. Uh, and again, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Callista, Risk Five team, thank you for the opportunity to, to let me speak. And uh, if you have any questions, I mean, do we have time for questions? Okay. Probably got time for about one or two questions, if anyone has any. Hello, so thank you for the speech. Um, I have a question that more the fund we sign in a way. So in Europe, there's uh, an institution called Europacti that enables research and academic institutions to create chips via uh, multi-wafer programs, uh, multi 
programs wafer, sorry, <laughs> the other way around, and PWs. Is there some consideration from Intel to join such an, uh, an opportunity so that the fab that you've mentioned throughout the world, a new one coming to Europe, would be potentially accessible to academic and researchers throughout Europe and the world, because I assume there's similar programs in the US or other places. Yeah, I don't know if it's a sound system. I couldn't really hear the question. Um, do you plan on using sort of boundaries for academic research institutions as That's a really good question. I know there's been discussion uh, of that area. I don't have an answer. I'm happy to follow up with you and, and provide an answer. Any other question? Hi. Um, with the Foundry uh, services offering, what uh, what process nodes are are, are going to be available? You know, all the process nodes that are announced for you know Intel's uh, main factories and fabrication plants are also going to be available for the Foundry side. So I don't have the list of our publicly announced availability of those nodes, but uh, um, it'll match the, uh, the, manufa uh, the manufacturing side of Intel that exists today. All right, thank you. Thank you.